We have a very interesting bit of kit here. This is the ICO model 717 electronic keyer. Somewhere in the 60s I think this was made. And it is a tube type piece of gear. Tubes. And it's an electronic keyer. We have a function switch, tune, operate, keying speed, range. I guess it probably has several speed ranges. I haven't found the manual on this yet. Uh, volume and tone. So there's a built-in speaker for a monitor. So it must have an internal oscillator that uh, lets you monitor the keying that you're doing. A light, a um, neon tube I'll bet, uh, to monitor the keying. If you wanted to turn down the volume there, you probably would see that flashing. I'm just guessing. I haven't powered it up yet. Um, on the back, we have a power cord, fuse holder, and then terminal strips for connections, dash and dot. So the center is ground, ground, dash, dot for paddles. And then uh, these two are to your keyed circuit. So this will be the keying output for your uh, radio. And headphones jack. Now this is an interesting piece of gear. So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tubes. This is obviously the power transformer. This caught my eye. You know what this is? This is a reed relay. This is a very early reed relay. Inside of here is a glass tube with two ferrous metal pins with the silver contacts and they are close to each other. Not quite touching, but close to each other. And this coil, when it's energized, creates a magnetic field which draws the two pieces of metal together. And that's your relay contacts. So it's a, it's a reed relay. A very early reed relay. <laughs> Haven't seen one of those ever. So I had to dust it off. It was pretty dusty. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, we got one, two, three, four, five, six tubes. Uh, the underside of the chassis is all point to point wiring. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to check these Mallory electrolytic capacitors and uh, check the main filter capacitor. I might have to replace one or two of those. That's obviously a filter choke. Uh, we got uh, two neon bulbs here. That's interesting. They're in series to ground, so that just must be. Uh, um, I wonder if that's transient protection on the switching side from your uh, transmitter. Well, uh, that's interesting. So, yeah, this is a very interesting piece of equipment. Anyway, I'm going to go through here, check the electrolytics, and uh, see if I can get it powered up so we can play with it. Okay, these two I replaced, the originals. Uh, Planet. <laughs> Planet branded Lighty Cap Dry Electrolytic. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I've never seen a Planet branded cap. That's, that's cool. 20 microfarad to 250 volts. One of them was marginal. The other one was uh, off the scale on ESR. So I replaced those with a, a couple that I had here that are 20 at 350 volts, but they test fine on the ESR, um, almost zero ohms, so replace those. The main filter cap down here, it tests uh, in the gray line, um, one to uh, almost two ohms, one ohm ES, 1.1, 1.2 ohm ESR on two of the chambers, and a little over two ohms on the other chamber, so it's marginal, but I think it'll be okay for powering it up. It's, it's going to do, it, uh, do all right. Okay, we've got her all hooked up. Ready to turn it on. A little hum from the power supply. Interesting power up. I guess you'd want to want to have your rig safe so it wouldn't go into transmit when you power it on the keyer or power on the keyer first. All right, so we've got speed adjustment ranges tone, which is probably the pitch, and volume. Yeah, 
interesting. So it doesn't buffer the uh, the taps. There was some point in there where going from a dash to a dot, it would not pick up the dot. Unless you held down the key until the dot actually occurred. Let's drop the speed down. Yeah, there. There, see? I went from dash to dot and it didn't pick up the dot, so it doesn't buffer the the paddle. You have to hold it until you get a um, element. And I don't think it's iambic. No, it's not. Yeah, the uh, dots take priority. If I hold down dash and I hit the dots while holding in dash, it switches to dots. If I hold down dots and hit the dash, nothing happens. So, dots take priority in the circuit. That's interesting. Yeah. You'd have to get used to holding that key in until you hear the element. Uh, I'm used to buffering on uh, modern keyers. If you just tap that when you're switching, it buffers that. It notices that you press the dot and then it sounds the element. But here you have to hold it until the element actually sounds. Let me drop it down to the slowest speed and see if I can illustrate that. Okay. I'm holding down the dot until the dot occurs. But if I release before the dot, I wonder if it works the other way that way. Yeah. You have to hold down the uh, paddle until you get your element. Boy, that's slow. How fast does it go? Let's see. Wow. There's no way. <laughs> oh, man. It would take a skilled operator to operate it at that speed. Looks like range B. So there you go, the ICO electronic keyer model 717 tube type electronic keyer. How about that? And it's fully working. Thanks for watching.